let's get them get started on this and oh boy we we we, we have a nice home page and a lot about clouds don't you guys think i love this home page so this was crafted by our design team together with jason bags uh from the web team as well and you know what dude i i am absolutely in love with this home page especially when you navigate a little bit down you can see literally a little bit of the web application through a video which does feel awesome to be honest so i absolutely love this home page uh you know and if you go a little bit all the way down we can see a little bit of these illustrations which are absolutely crazy you see like when you navigate oh yeah oh yeah right this is just absolutely awesome i love this one <laughs> Uh, there is so much little things to explore today and I want to show you kind of the tiny bits, you know, the little things that took forever and nobody noticed. So today for the live stream, I thought about showing you the raw, literally my own dashboard on Laravel Cloud, not some beautiful dashboard, not some demo dashboard, literally my own dashboard, you know, with my projects inside, with my own organization. At the moment, I only have one organization, which is called Side Projects, and I pretty much have all my all my projects inside. So you can see pyre.link, you can see pinkery.com, you can see passphp.com, and you can see Laravel Zero. So literally all my websites are on this page. So that's a nice surprise. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we do are we are actually shipping with MySQL. And that was a nice surprise I want to give to people because a lot of people were thinking, oh, we don't have MySQL. It will be a nightmare. Postgres, blah, blah, blah. Postgres is awesome. I'm going to just tell you that. Postgres is awesome and it does ship with hibernation as well. But we do we did manage to actually ship with MySQL and i'm super excited about that okay literally shipping with my sql i have worked my ass off to literally have my sql ready for the release uh, together with the team so hopefully everyone is happy about that let's actually add an app okay so the only thing i have done so far is literally creating a starter kit application with react okay so if i go to the resources you will see a lot of react stuff with typescript blah 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 all the cool things but you know I have added my own source control provider and that's it. Let's call this stream demo react, okay? Now, when people are creating an application, something important to keep in mind is the region where you are shipping your application, okay? So if you're in the United States, probably the first region, US East Ohio is the best one. But obviously if you're in Europe, you might want to consider Frankfurt or London, or if you're in Asia, why not like Singapore, okay? But let's use like US for the moment. Let's create this new app. And you know, once you do that, you are literally ready to click on the deploy button. It, like that's it, you know? But let's click on deploy to see how it goes, okay? So once I click on deploy, I get kind of redirected to the this deployment output, which does look amazing. And I'm not sure if the React Starter Kit actually requires a database. If it does, it will kind of fail at the moment. I hope it doesn't, but I guess we're going to find out real soon. Okay, it's literally deployed already. So that took like 46 seconds. I can visit my website and hopefully if I don't need a database, oh, I don't. So that's it, you know? So you guys saw like how, how much time it took. I literally created the database, created the application, click on deploy, and that's it. I am literally on my website at the moment. It it, it is cool. It is cool. <laughs> Obviously requires a database because we do have a registration route right here. So what I will do is just attach a database to this uh, by clicking on add database. I could use my own databases, but let's let's click let's create a new one. Let's call this one um, stream react for example let's use um postgres 17 i could use mysql as well but let's use postgres and call this database main the region will be ohio hibernation as well after 300 seconds and create database cluster <clears throat> so i don't know if you have used this kind of things and other hosting solutions but literally creating database just takes forever and with laravel cloud you will see that this this stuff right here will basically be out or done in five seconds <laughs> it's just ridiculous like how fast this is and yeah once i do this i'm literally ready to save in deploy and now my data my application will have a database which just feels good you know so this is deployed so technically and i mean technically i should have a database 
So if I click on register, let's type Inu Maduro, my own email. Let's just do this, ba ba boom. Create an account, save the password, why not? And that's it. So I'm literally using a database at the moment. <laughs> So, I don't know if you guys noticed, like, attaching a database just worked, and effectively that happens because behind the scenes, we are literally attaching automatically the PHP Artisan Migrate Force to your deployment script. So all of this is, like, literally configurable from your settings screen, where you can, you know, if you want to, you can go to your deployment uh, scripts and obviously, you know, change all of this. Of course, for now, the only thing we are doing is just running Composer install. If we have a, a, a package.json block, I'm gonna run your npm run build, but obviously, because we now have a database, I automatically uncomment this, this line right here. So everything really just works. We also have caches, which is kind of cool as well, okay? Caches, at the moment, we support Laravel key value store, and it's compatible with Redis, so it literally works like Redis, you know, uh, compatible with the Redis API. You can specify the size of a cache you want to use, and that's it. But uh, yeah, we also have object storage as well. If you want to store your files in the private bucket or public bucket, um, what do I have on settings here? Oh yeah, settings literally to invite members. Yeah, so for example, I did invite Puya Paul. So the guy who is like helping me out with Pinkery, I invited him as a developer, so he can literally access, uh, you know, cloud and work a little bit on uh, moving the integration to um, or moving Pinkery to to Laravel Cloud. As a user, we have you can belong to multiple organizations. Multiple organizations can have different projects, just like I have right now. And one very cool thing is the following, my friends, is the following, is that when you jump into a project, you can literally have different environments, okay? This is actually super powerful because right now, as you guys can see, we have this project, okay? Which we can call this production, if you guys want. However, However, I can also come here and from the same branch, I can create, uh, for example, my uh, staging environment if I want to. Okay, I can literally do this if I want to. And now I can have my staging environment, which works uh, like aside my production environment, which is this one. And now I'm gonna show you something really, really, really sexy, okay? I hope this works. So I'm gonna do the following. As you guys can see, I have like the main environment, but I'm gonna create, um, main environment, no, uh, main branch. But I'm gonna create a new branch. Watch this out, watch this out, watch this out, my friends. I'm gonna check out maybe something called it staging. And let's, yeah, create this branch upstream. Bam, bam, boom. This should be like literally on GitHub already. So hopefully through reverb, I now see staging here. <laughs> this is cool, right? <laughs> All right, cool, 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 cool. So yeah, from this diagram, you can literally understand everything about your app. Let's start with the left side, okay? Let's start with this left side. This left side is called the network, which is powered by Cloudflare, okay? If you weren't using something like Cloudflare in the past, I'm gonna just tell you, Cloudflare is so powerful, provides so much protection, edge caching especially, which is so cool. I'm gonna just show you a small stat that I have on my pastphp.com website, which will surprise you. So I'm gonna go to pastphp.com. This is literally pastphp.com production. So again, if you see anything you shouldn't, just keep that for you, okay? And I'm gonna go to metrics. And just check this metrics out. <clears throat> so most, if not all of the requests are literally cached by Cloudflare, okay? This is like literally edge network responses. In most of these responses are literally being cached by Cloudflare. My CPU is barely doing anything whatsoever because most of the responses I'm having on this instance are not even going to my own web cluster. Everything is being served, you know, almost everything from Cloudflare, which are the static assets, okay? And that's why something like edge networking, edge caching is so important for your infrastructure because you don't wanna, you don't wanna pay for things like images and CSS resources and all, and all sort of things, okay? So that's why something like Cloudflare is so important and we do have that enabled for every single, every single application on cloud.
Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the web cluster. So this is literally the web cluster that ships by default in your app, which is literally like uh, one flex, one CPU, uh, kind of the traditional stuff. We have auto scaling. This is one of the most powerful things about Laravel Cloud, okay? And I know that if you come from you some sort of uh, forge approach where you have your own server, auto scaling is something that you may not know. But the way it's done on Laravel Cloud, it's actually very powerful. So you can have none, which is literally have one single replica in your uh, in your cluster, which is what it would say like what you have, for example, on Laravel Forge. But you have something here called it custom custom auto scaling and what you can do here is really specify how much replicas you can have you may have if you have a bunch of traffic okay so if i do something like one to five what's happening here right now is that what i'm telling to cloud is if my application go viral create up to five instances okay but if my application doesn't go viral just stay in one replica only so i just pay like nothing you know one of my favorite options I have on Laravel Cloud is literally hibernation. Allows you to basically put your application to sleep so you don't pay like anything. So for example, here I can have a bunch of auto scaling. I can have the biggest instance size selected on this thing. If my application is sleeping, I don't pay anything, which is, you know, one of the most powerful things we have on Laravel Cloud as well. I have hibernation enabled in all my applications at the moment. And you might think like things like past PHP, they don't sleep literally because there is people checking the documentation all the time. But uh, there is websites like uh, Laravel Zero, which doesn't have a lot of traffic recently. So sometimes it just sleeps for one minute, for example. So that that's pretty cool. How about now, my friends? Can you guys see it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. What I was saying basically is that this is literally the place to create, uh, you know, queue workers. Very fancy, very handy, very happy with this as well. Uh, let's see some of these tabs. I want to talk a little bit about these options. Um, oh, we have commands as well. So typically, if you want to run something real quick, like PHP artisan list, you can just do that real quick. Bam, bam, boom. Just real fast. Already using Laravel 12. Of course. Of course. Laravel 12 already. How many of you have migrated to Laravel 12 already? Just write on the chat if you have migrated to Laravel 12 already or not. Now, of course, we have settings, okay? There is so much to talk about these settings that I want to explain to you, okay? Of course, we have environment name, environment color. If you are using Pinkery, why not going a little bit pinky right here? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, what else? We have Git branch, which allows you to specify which branch you want to work on this environment, which might be production, for example. We have the PHP version. Ooh. Great topic here, which PHP version you guys have, because you do need to be at least on PHP 8.2 to be on Laravel Cloud, my friends, okay? Of course, Node can be the 20 or 22 custom environment variables, injected environment variables. I want to talk with you about this, okay? Should I just share my screen? Uh, okay, maybe not, yeah. Let's share this one though. This one is all right. Okay, so I'm currently on my stream demo React, which obviously um, have an app key, which is automatic generated when you first create your app on Laravel Cloud, but also things like you can just tweak everything you want, like things like DB connection. If you want to use a very special DB connection, you can do that right here. Uh, you can also specify things like the app name, like a different one. Most of these environment variables, they are already being injected right here, okay? But I cannot reveal secrets, otherwise you guys will do crazy stuff with my life, with my secrets, okay? So I won't do that. However, if I were to do that, you would see that Laravel Cloud injects a bunch of environments, uh, environment variables, so you can, you don't have to do that by yourself, okay? <laughs> Anyways, we have deploy hooks. Oh yeah, baby, deploy hooks, because why not? You can literally click on this button right here, copy this little thing and do a cloud deployment really fast. Mm. So for example, if you are using GitHub Actions, okay, this is actually a very good use case. If you are using GitHub Actions, what you wanna do, my friends, is disable push to deploy, okay? Enable the deploy hooks and copy this little link that you can use in your CI. So if your task suite is passing, is passing with past, then you would run your deploy hook. Query this URL right here, bam, bam, boom, and issue a deployment with Laravel Cloud. Mwah. So 
we have this command palette thing. You can just type stuff and just move between projects. So technically here I can type past PHP and bam, move to past. Oh yeah, this is cool, right? I can type command K again and just do something like pyre.link. Bam, and just move to pyre.link. This is cool, right? <laughs> you guys don't have access to this website. So you don't know. So I will be able to demo hibernation. <laughs> it is sleeping, dudes. I know. I know you guys are visiting the website. All right, here we go. Hibernating for one minute right there. You guys see? Kind of cool, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you. You guys can shine. All right, one of you, please go to this website right here. <laughs> One of you, just visit this website. Once you do that, this hibernation banner will just basically disappear automatically. Oop, there we go. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Let's clap to hibernation right here. That was a good one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, you snatched the playground, .laravel.com? Yeah, I, I, I would advise people to literally go here and just snatch the, like, the those cool domains already because they are going away so fast like yesterday it was up to 10,000 custom domains just poof gone right just like that